Today's conference will focus on the question of which skills a physician should have in order to be prepared for the increasing digitalization of medicine. Preparation for this must start in medical training. Surveys report that patients' openness for digital technologies is high and an increasing number of physicians are also becoming more open. I'm pleased that, together with the European Association, the Standing Committee of European Doctors, the German Medical Association, the Bundesärztekammer, is addressing this topic so intensely. So skills, uh, it is an important component of this uh, uh, of, of, of the set of initiatives that the Commission is, uh, is, is, is contributing to the, to, to the digital transformation. Um, and as you were saying before, not only uh, for the inclusion part, so the digital inclusion for, for every citizen, but also for, uh, uh, the, the, for, for specific sectors, the curriculum. Medicine has always been a field where technology innovation was translated into new diagnostic and treatment options. And this is always very much tied with the qualification, the creation of new jobs, new professions and, and new curricula. We still see um, actually a huge gap in our current ed education from on the one side the, the willingness of students to become um, part of the digitalization of healthcare and to learn about e-health and the other, on the other hand, we have the lack uh, of education and practical training. For best practice, I would like to emphasize the students' engagement, the bottom-up approach. We really want students to be involved and we also have the courses where students are actually organizing. Uh, for example, the innovation course where they um, look the new healthcare innovations together with the companies and actually build up the models with them. What we try to do, we not only um, try to bring new knowledge um, to the students, but really to do hands-on experiences and we put them into simulation uh, areas where they, um, where they can use those technologies in new field. And it's a lot about critical reflection, about ethics, about thinking what the patient really needs, about, um, about really becoming a change maker. So uh, a big part of the curriculum is also critical reflection and, uh, and discussion among various groups. So we involve not only different medical professions and healthcare professionals, no, at the very core we include patients as teachers. We include um, data protectionists, we include uh, apps and uh, startups as part of the curriculum. Health systems are co can be complicated. They're business systems to use. They're not, um, you know, they're not swipeable systems. They're, they're not based, uh, you know, uh, around social media characteristics. So I think um, so some doctors certainly feel that they need to even get to a, um, a basic level before they have the confidence to um, improve their skills um, on specific systems or, or procedures in relation to their in relation to their jobs. Organizations they they maybe look at a big bang approach and they say, oh, you know, we have 10,000 doctors and we're going to, you know, implement a massive scheme and we're going to upskill them all, or we're going to upskill everybody in our hospital. Um, where, you know, when you're talking about digital skills initiatives, really a kind of incremental approach is 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 much better. Um, you know, you, you take your easy, you take your quick wins at the beginning, you deal with small groups that builds a momentum of its own. It, it develops motivation um, uh, amongst colleagues and then the broader workforce, you get some good news stories out. So you take it bit by bit. We do not need a doctor who is able to program or to code an algorithm um, or um, to be able to uh, oversee all the, medic the the laws that are there for digital health uh, in, in, in uh, health. But we need uh, doctors that are able to assess the basics of digital technologies on the one hand, who are able to, to oversee uh, data science and understand the mechanisms of algorithms, and on the other side have also the competency to yeah, the, the communication competence is to talk and to um, be empathetic with the patient and see the needs of the patient. And I think this will expand um, when we have the digital transformation of healthcare. And especially um, we need um, a doctors that know who to ask for help, so um, that are able to communicate and work in a multidisciplinary team 
um, with data scientists, uh, with engineers and uh, nurses. These words say that the rock, the more we learn. This is a process uh, uh, that is uh, a, a transformative by nature. So the, the only way that you can develop something and make sure that that technological solution it is taken up within a certain boundaries is because you have developed it together or you wanted to use it. And uh, 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 the examples of this interaction is, for instance, on this group that the Commission set up. It's called the the eHealth Stakeholder Group, listening to voice and coming up with joined up approaches, even within uh, within member states, because uh, it is it is this this concept of interacting. As applicators of these technologies in the interest of patients, we need to understand the possibilities, um, but also the limitations. And this is where um, a much of the curricular um, efforts, I think, should be focused on. And um, so the first thing that um, needs to be done is to find um, a way to get these technologies uh, in a legally manageable and a safe way um, to be part of patient care. And um, so this is where the government is actually um, um, sort of uh, important because they do provide the regulatory basis. We call it augmented uh, intelligence because there is nothing really artificial about this type of intelligence. Uh, do you have a position on that? I fully agree. I think it's uh, the, the word um, augmented is very appropriate because what artificial intelligence does is actually augment, increase the capacity of humans. It does not replace the humans. And so I think it's really important also for doctors, for the medical profession, um, to learn how to interact with artificial intelligence. For example, not to believe that AI makes the decision. AI is just a tool the decisions remain with the humans. And I think this borderline is really important. For me, the present situation, the COVID crisis is a very good example that the medical profession is actually extremely resilient. Because when you see the severity of the crisis, the huge problems that face, uh, that the medical profession is facing, I think we can say that uh, the doctors and all the health sector has really shown uh, its capacity uh, to rise up to the challenge. And so for me, the COVID crisis is much worse as a challenge than the disruption caused by AI. So I'm very confident that the health profession in particular um, will have uh, all the tools necessary um, to be very performing in the future. The digital transformation and patients' increasing autonomy is leading to more of them actively searching for health information online. Three things need to be remembered. First, data belong to the patients. They alone may determine how these are to be used. Second, the use of digital services must be voluntary. Patients must be given transparent and comprehensive information regarding the opportunities and potential risks of digital services. Only then can they make a self-determined decision for or against their use. In this connection, one point is critical for me. If people decide against such use, for whatever reason, then this must not place them at a disadvantage, since many Older people did not grow up with digital media, there are some that never mastered them. And thirdly, the use of this data must encompass the best possible legal and technical protection against misuse. I am aware that there is no such thing as absolute security. Data protection violations must be prosecuted and punished vigorously. In the right hand, these data can save lives, but in the wrong hand, they can devastate them. Every disruptive innovation in healthcare brings with it the risk, the risk of undermining the mutual trust and respect between physicians and the patients. And this is something every 
every physician has to keep in mind. Trust is a key message. Trust is a key message to hold on the close relationship between patients and physicians in future with digital medicine. On behalf uh, of the German Medical Association and the Standing Committee of European Doctors, uh, I would like to thank all speakers uh, of today uh, for taking the time to share their expertise to us. I would expressly like, expressively like to thank uh, the German Medical Association and their president Klaus Reinhardt again for giving us the room to have this hybrid studio here in the Bundesärztekammer in Berlin.